agree. So um, just to for to repeat some background, we're our our aim, our principal aim is to decide on a consensus design that everyone is at least reasonably happy with for a potential new Arecibo instrument for covering all of the Arecibo science areas, astronomy, atmospheric science, planetary science. Um, it's kind of, I think it's the helicopter outside here. I hope that's not too bothersome. Anyway, um, uh, so, and part of the reason for that consensus is so uh, that the uh, advocacy committee of ASAP, as well as um, the observatory, as far as I know, are, are keeping in good touch with Congress and they're, they feel that there is significant uh, interest and potential support in Congress for funding a new observatory. And, but we have to tell them something definite about what that should be. Or, um, so that's what we're aiming for right now to get input and ideas. And I hope, and uh, as well as the science, uh, Eliana started at what might be useful. I probably, uh, we need to you know, have re justification for what we want. So interesting science, continuation of old science, perhaps new science. She started a little matrix. I can uh, send that out later uh, uh, that maybe we could add to, to help with that. Um, we can as well talk about it as well. Um, and I'm hoping we can get some uh, interesting ideas uh, for new things the, that the observatory might be able to do, new capabilities for new science. And also keep in mind that, uh, well, I would say the majority of us are not radio and radar and mechanical engineers. Um, I would say, you know, ask for what we think is interesting and then we'll just talk with it with the engineers and, and see what's possible. And I know there's a few of them here also of uh, engineers. So I'm they're happy I'm happy to have their their advice and input at, at any time. Um, and perhaps uh, depending on how we go with this meeting, we'll we will I'm sure we'll have future uh, discussions and perhaps more focused ones on the sub areas. We'll see how it goes. Um, so in the email I had a couple of suggestions uh, and that, that were discussed. We had, I mean, last meeting we had some presentations, we didn't really get around to discussion, but there, a lot of the discussion has been about the sinkhole. What should be in the sinkhole? Uh, a, an improved dish, uh, an array of dishes, what frequency coverage should be there? What kind of radars? Um, so I think the, the radar part, the transmitters, is actually a separate item. It, it, it does not depend on whether it's a dish or a thousand dishes in the sinkhole. We, that's a different question. What radars do we want? What radar frequencies for what science purposes? Um, and uh, as well as there are new uh, ideas for atmospheric science that were not around when the original Arecibo was built. Uh, Things such as uh, the, the new radars that are being built that I'm aware of in China, in Europe, they, as well as the traditional ISCAT had vector measurement capabilities for their radars for atmospheric measurements. And they also are now beginning to have imaging capabilities. So I think that's something to consider for Arecibo atmospheric science and other purposes as well. Could um, you expand, Brett, could you expand on what you mean by vector capabilities and even imaging capabilities? Well, vector would be require uh, at least three receiving three uh, separated receiving sites, you know, on the order of a hundred kilometers, or so or more or or less, depending on what. So you get three different angles at the same volume in the atmosphere and can make a vector measurement. Sorry. And the, okay. And that, well, we can discuss that. And there are, there's also been a lot of work on uh, systems extending that idea into a, using a technique called MIMO, multiple in, multiple out, which can include even more than one transmitter as well as more than one receiving site. It, we're talking about different sites. And that's been used a lot in, in successfully in Germany for uh, VHF radar systems. Um, and then lastly, Arecibo has been historically had a lot of HF. Uh, capabilities, both for modification 
experiments, plasma physics and radio experiments in the atmosphere, as well as radar capabilities. So which in that's also a, a somewhat, I would say, separate topic. And whether all these things can be included in a single site, I mean, all of these systems uh, at, the, at the sinkhole is a, is a question. And certainly the vector things that Don just was asking about, that requires at least two additional sites for three different look angles into the atmosphere to get a, a vector motion of bulk motion as well as uh, plasma wave activity, details of the plasma waves that are occurring at that location or, or any other type of wave. So, um, is there something, it, I'm open to what to start with. Uh, if somebody wants to suggest an initial topic or has any comment, so go ahead. Brett, maybe, maybe we can just start from what you just said about uh, the sinkhole. Because mm -hmm. as all we know, uh, the sinkhole obviously has uh, its big advantages in terms of uh, protecting from RFI, but at the same time, it puts serious limits to the uh, collecting area of whatever instrument uh, we're finally going to build. Yeah, wait, wait. Okay, the, the, the sinkhole does not protect from RFI because you've got a platform that's sitting way up in the air where you've got this other thing. So that, that's but, a but that's only that's, a that's only if you have a, another platform. If you don't have a platform, for example, then you still get protection from RFI. If you want to give up your look angle, yeah. Yes, yes. So there are several trade-offs to, to be considered, but obviously that's probably one place to start from. I mean, do we really want to limit our uh, construction uh, uh, capabilities to just the sinkhole, or we want to be able to expand it? That's probably one place to start. How would you expand it, Luca? I mean, what do you do? You have anything in mind in particular? Well, no, of course, if you have just, uh, if, if the final configuration is going to be a single dish and uh, clearly there is no, no uh, uh, capability to expand it. If you have an array, then you may think to have a sparse configuration where the, the antennas can be in the sinkhole, but they also can be outside the sinkhole as well. But as, then of course it would add also uh, complexity. So. But my, uh, the, 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 whole the whole question is really regarding whether uh, we were thinking to, uh, to have some constraints in terms of the maximum collecting area that, uh, that we want. And, and that's related also to the, something you also mentioned at the beginning of this, uh, of this telecom today is the um, possibility for Congress, for Congress to fund uh, these uh, the new instrument. So, are you able, or are we able, to put any numbers on on top of it, of this possibility, or we have, or we know nothing about it? You mean any money numbers? Yes, yes. money numbers. Yes. <laughs> well, there's been a a lot of talk of several hundred million dollars asking Congress, and that can be the in the in the the low hundreds of millions of dollars, but up to, I've heard numbers up to, up to half a billion dollars, but um, okay. <laughs> that's it. That's yeah. all I know, really. I so strongly suspect that that's limiting you to building a replacement dish. For, um, I guess I'm just guessing off the top of my head, such a need uh, to build another dish, improved dish um, with Bit better declination coverage than the current uh, than the old one, etc. Um, higher frequency radars, but you're talking about you know two, three, more, more hundred million dollars just to do that. And so, if you're talking about something that's limited to less than four or five hundred million, um, it's going to be very difficult to do anything too much more elaborate. Oh, 
Yeah, that's something we should. So just just as a data point, right? When they introduced that bill that got introduced and removed, just as a sort of friendly gesture, I think the number in there was something like four fifty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. And could... and four four fifty would certainly rebuild you an Arecibo, but. Yeah. I, it would rebuild Arecibo and probably do a few other things um, for that amount. But um, okay. so basically, if we if we start from the from uh, basic principles, uh, so to speak, uh, uh, money. So basically, the only the only option left would be to rebuild uh, the the single dish, not to do anything all the other more exotic uh, proposals that we have seen. Uh, just a note in the short term from one of the ASAP emails a couple weeks ago, uh, they encourage people to send letters asking in the competes act for 12 million for design studies, hopefully flush out some of these arguments in more detail. Namir Kasim here. Um, so I, I'm a little bit outside of your nominal focused group. Um, also, I don't know where this fits in, but I just thought I'd throw it in. So my experience has been that, I know you're, I hate this, but um, what you really need, I, I almost hate to use it, is like, you need, you, need, you need a killer app, right? You need one, two, maximum three, that especially if it's Congress, right? They don't wanna see a list of a hundred things, which it goes against my uh, thinking actually. I'm an observatory person. I believe in an observatory that has a broad range, but that my experience is that doesn't work very well. So I, I like the fact you think about the money, that's good. You should know how big is the pot. Then the other thing is you guys gotta pick something and make it, into some, you know, make it really exciting. And then I, you can turn the recording off for this. It doesn't even matter if you can end up doing it. Um, I believe me, I've seen it happen numerous times. That's how you sell something big. So you got to come in here and you got to say, you know, the old Arecibo was great and did all this pioneering stuff, but boy, we're ready to take the next step. And if we can, bang, bang, bang. And those can be a stretch. I mean, you can't outright lie, obviously, but, you know, don't worry. Within a factor of two, four, whatever, don't worry about signal to noise. Just go for it. That's the only hope you'll have. That's been my experience. And I don't like it. But that's, that's the way I've seen it go. Anyway, just figured I'd throw that in there. Uh, this is a uh, Sam Myers. I've been leading some of the congressional outreach stuff for the advocacy side of things. And yeah, what, what Namir said is exactly right. So what we've been trying to do first is just get Congress's attention. We've done that. Now we're just saying, let's throw a little money in the pot so we can flesh out some ideas. But yeah, what we really need is a single idea, one thing that like, this is the thing we would like to get that in front of them. So we have a, a base to start from. And it needs to be like Namir said, something, a single thing, something exciting that we can push on them and say, this is the thing we want. And of course that will change. And so there's no like, oh, we have to make sure it's capped under this dollar amount or, you know, we have to come to Congress and say, we need something that has all these, like Namir said, all these hundred things. We don't need any of that. We just need a single idea that we can say, this is the thing we want. It will have some price tag with it, maybe. And then we go from there. And, yeah, so. and something that can be shown like on one quad chart, one page. And then the good news is you shouldn't be disappointed at the fact that that thing isn't what like maybe, you know, two thirds of you may not even care about that thing. You'll end up with a facility that can then do all the broad stuff you really want to do. Well, and, and so, I mean, that, that's how Arecibo was built to start with. And I think we're, we're, the issue we have right now is that there's too many players. And like right, Sam is doing some uh, work with, with Congress. UCF is nominally in charge. They don't seem terribly active, but we, I don't really know what they're doing behind the scenes. So it was the, 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 we're trying to figure out how, to, how do we get to the point where we've identified 
okay, right? That's what we've been saying. We need an ask, right? We need to say, we're asking for blah and not, well, we kind of want one of these and, and that would be nice. And this other thing would be cool too. We need an ask as, as a community. And so we're talking about how do we come up with that? And so the, the idea that, that ASAP had was, well, let's just try and come up with something that we can actually try to get um, UCF on board with. And there are some sort of sketch designs that people who came from, from Lockheed have some ideas about how to maybe build a single dish in a, in a, in a cool way that people would like. Uh, so that, that is our goal. Uh, how, but again, since, since we're not the ones nominally in charge of the observatory at this point, how do we get to the point of, of having that, that ask? And one of the things I've heard from the congressional offices I've been speaking with is that from their perspective, this is still in the finger pointing stage of things. And so no one has just come up with anything. And so even just having an idea out on the board gives at least theoretically something to start consolidating against and a point to start working against. And so it, we don't even really need to be worrying about, oh, is this the official ask? Just an ask is needs to get out there so that there's a concrete point to start having these conversations around. But what is the single like most exciting thing, even if it was just a long shot that you could imagine, could you protect the earth from asteroids or something, you know, something, something, even if it's a stretch, what it, there's gotta be, what is it that, you know, and you're just, it's gotta be really, even if it's a little crazy. I mean, planetary defense is the thing that Congress is interested in right now. That's the topic that seems to excite them when I speak with offices. So there you go. There you go. Figure out a way, even if it's not, you know, technically, you know, whatever. Well, I mean, it is. It is technically all those things. Right now, it's who's going to do this. I mean, in my opinion, who's going to do this and how are they going to put it? Because, again, the people sort of in charge of the ask are not very active. Um, and so we need to find a way to, to get that going. Uh, like said, Sam has been in Congress talking to people and maybe that's, that's probably the way to do it. You know, like obviously I'm partial to asteroid stuff, but I think saying something like we want a two megawatt radar system for planetary defense is a good like point to lead with. About a decade ago, there was a, you know, with the cutback in funding for Arecibo sparked a tremendous amount of discussion within Congress about, uh, about planetary defense. And so I, and the need for high powered radar systems. And uh, so I agree that, um, that that's probably the most public and sellable um, um area that we'd be um, that we should concentrate on well so i mean to, to point out sort of the issue we're having yesterday at the small bodies assessment group meeting which i'll be leading for again in a little while, a little while uh lindley johnson head of the planetary defense coordination office said that nsf was leading uh a thing to uh decide on a new radar facility now of course none of us have ever heard of this um right that, that the NSF, as far as we know, is doing no such thing. So no, it, is, it is, Mike. Uh, as Patrick Taylor can tell you, they are funding a, uh, a design effort for the GBT. Right. And well, they are doing so. No, this was supposed to be a, a forum to discuss what the future of this would be, not, not uh, to figure out what the future is, not to not a specific facility yet. And that we're working with NASA to do that. I mean, maybe that is what their what that effort is. Uh, but the, the 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 way that was put, and the way right, like, and maybe the design effort for the GBT is all is what they plan to do. And uh, right. And that raises. It raises the issue of um, that any facility that are to replace Arecibo has to have uh, potentially better performance than what you could achieve with uh, with the GBT, or otherwise, um, 
it may not get the support you would, uh, we would like. <laughs> Following on, on what Mike was commenting about uh, the small bodies meeting yet here yesterday, um, I think my take was similar to what Mike was saying. That the question was pertaining our SIBO, but when Lindley gave the answer, uh, his answer was, uh, we're, we're, we're doing a working group that is going to have NSF, that is being led by NSF and it has the Space Force, the Space Command, and NASA working together for a planetary radar facility. They did not specify Arecibo. Um, so it may well be, it may very well be that they're, um, you know, just thinking about uh, investing more in another facility to bring it up to par to what was our capabilities before. They did say that we were going to have an NSF person speak to us tomorrow here at SBAG, so I don't know if they'll have more information. But if um if we're into our selling point to have a, a radar system to be like the ask, it should be something that like I personally think we should just try and do what we had but better because it's faster and easier and it's known. Um, and like everybody was saying at the beginning, we can the facility can start with one thing and grow from there as long as we start as long as we have something to start with and keep adding instruments. So summing up, does this mean that this new facility should be focused and optimized for planetary radar applications rather than radio astronomy or say, ionospheric physics? Well, it mean, I, think, no, I don't think it means that. It, it, it means that, that that's, the, the reason it's going to be built and it has to be really good at that and that will have some implications but i don't think it it i mean it it, it means it won't be a it won't be a sparse array if you're doing that because that's not useful for planetary radar but right um the at least to start with right but the, the that's that's the, the the thing that will get it funded and um as with the old arecibo it we expect it, it'll still be a big telescope that'll focus on sensitivity and can do lots of things. I mean, this yeah. is important because as you said, that this, this is already putting some serious questions on some of the configurations that have been proposed. Yes. Yeah, I mean, you'll have to make some sacrifice. Obviously, if you pick something to put up front, you know, it'll, it'll obviously influence the design a lot. But usually, when you build a lot of new modern infrastructure, you know, it's kind of hard for it not to be useful for all kinds of other science. But yeah, some people, it may, it'll never work out. But I think Don's point is important. I, like, I don't know anything about radar initiatives. If, if, some, if there are conversations already going on about new facilities and stuff, you guys either have to be in those conversations or, well, or it's a real problem. I mean, that's, you won't really need something that you're kind of uniquely good at. You don't want to go and start having to fight like the GBT crowd. What I'm saying is that if you, for example, rebuild a, 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 a receivable like single dish with just an expanded capability in terms of a, a more powerful radar, but the frequency, frequency coverage will be the same, the declination coverage will be almost the same, then it'll, uh, it, uh, it's not really of much interest to radio astronomers. Yeah, no, I think we definitely, but uh, so the, for planetary radar, you want increased declination coverage, that's up particularly to the south. Um, and you want, you'd like to go to higher frequency if you could, so I think those same things are going to be important. That, that the thing that I think is a compromise is the desire for a, basically a, a single fat beam. And so uh, the, that leads you towards a single dish or a, or a very compact array, not a sparse array. Right. I would also take a little issue with the remark that uh, it would not be interesting to radio astronomers to have a dish that was like the old dish. Uh, one hopes it would be better than the old dish. And even the old dish was still 
very uh, very well uh, requested by proposals. Well, definitely, you would like to have. Uh, uh, I was talking earlier about the collecting area. I think that uh, focusing on collecting area and frequency coverage is very important. But uh, uh, likewise, very important is to talk about uh, the uh, quality of spectral line observations, which were not very good with the old Arecibo, the uh, multi-reflection with the platform were simply horrible at very, with very long and duration times that it was almost useless. So that's, that's another point that we need to concentrate on if we want radio astronomy, radio astronomers at large to be really interested in the new instrument. One trust this would be uh, taken care of in the design process. Well, I mean, you do still, if, if you're building a single dish, you do still have the problem that you have a, probably a fixed primary and probably a moving secondary, and that's going to lead to standing waves that vary. Um, uh, that basic design does have that sort of feature. Yeah, not unless you, you build your uh, secondary, your fixed secondary in a different way. Uh, for example, if you use uh, something like uh, the reflector ray technology that I uh, talked about some right. time ago, right. that, but, but that would be much better in terms of, uh, you will need a much lighter structure, for example, rather than the old platform. And right, that but that's the, I, I, think, I think that's the point that people are getting at. That's a design detail that we can yes. use, yeah. that we so. can, that we don't have to worry about. What we have to worry about is, okay, do we have a project and what are the basic outlines of it and how do we get that so that people actually agree on it and are willing to present it to Congress as this is what we'd like to do. And of course, there will be design studies, right? That any project will start with that um, and uh, some of the ideas. And in fact, uh, right, as I said, the, the people from, from Lockheed who joined uh, have a preliminary design that they're getting some funding to go do some testing on. That would be basically, it, it takes a lot of, it would have a much lighter, suspended structure is their uh, th th their goal and uh, do a lot of work on the ground that's certainly something we want to investigate but uh, the, the, but that's a design detail not a but yeah, however there's a constraint there is a constraint you cannot uh, overcome with the current design and it's as i said at the beginning this is the sinkhole the sinkhole will always set a, a maximum size to any uh, single dish telescope you want to rebuild there and uh, you can overcome that by making the, the surface much, much more efficient, which you can do that. Uh, but that, that's a constraint that you cannot overcome if you're going to use the, the sinkhole. You know, the Arecibo sinkhole was actually chosen uh, to keep open the option of a 1500 foot diameter um, mm. telescope. Uh, it was finally abandoned. The, that idea because it meant that the center of the reflector would have had to have been uh, five or six meters above the current center and that would have increased costs considerably at the time. Um, okay. You probably also have some problems with with some of the cliffs that it won't actually right in. but the but that sinkhole was actually chosen for exactly the reason that, uh, that they were considering, seriously considering a 1500 foot reflector um, in order to avoid spillover effects. So it's possible that it would hold a somewhat larger reflector than the current one. Um, better say, probably significant increase, you know, an increase in cost. Yeah. Um, this is Tapasi. Can I bring in a point? Um, so in Brett's uh, talk, we last meeting, we saw that he left uh, um, what goes in the sinkhole to uh, further discussions. But around that, he had his idea about this uh, <clears throat> 
incoherent SCAR radar for atmospheric facilities as well as the heating facilities that were additional uh, facilities that will go around what goes in the sinkhole. So Brett, would you like to comment on that? Because whatever, uh, you know, even uh, the, uh, the modified new and better single dish at the sinkhole doesn't rule out your overall plan that you're planning for the atmospheric sciences, right? Or am I wrong? Sorry, yeah, um, that's right. The, uh, the basic idea is to have additional receiving at least three receiving sites at different locations and the other additional one of them could be at the sinkhole at the dish or and the others could be uh, at far, farther away locations in Puerto Rico and or and the Virgin Islands basically chosen to get a, a decent uh, vector ma radar measurement uh, at a along the transmitter beam. So you could scan up and down the transmitter beam and get uh, th three-dimensional measurements of scattering along the beam. And so we would need additional sites and additional receivers. And I I'm sort of, uh, those would be a phased array receiver. So they could scan quickly up and down the transmitter beam. And they could be at any of the radar frequencies uh, for 430 megahertz or around there. Um, there's a lot of discussion. At, the ISCAT one is at 200 megahertz. They're doing a very similar thing. They're adding, as Don also asked about imaging, ISCAT is adding the possibility of imaging within the radar beam for the atmosphere. So to inc increase uh, the resolution in the more or less the uh, horizontal direction in the atmosphere as well. Um, there's a lot of discussion about lower frequencies doing a similar thing. The, the, what's called the, what has been called the geospace radar at around 40 megahertz, this, this idea, and for which there's also several proposals or, or ideas for proposals uh, at, at different locations. That's the same idea, but at a, at a 40 megahertz frequency and focusing not on both incoherent scatter and coherent scatter throughout the atmosphere as well as other things. Um, and it, it could as well be done at the planetary radar frequency, uh, the, the, the Arecibo uh, S-band and the Goldstone, I think also S-band radars have been used for extremely high resolution measurements in the stratosphere. That's something else that could be possible. So the basic thing necessary is some additional receiving sites at other locations than the sinkhole. Right. But, but I think oh, as Depazi uh, said, it, none of that's precluded. Brett, how big would the outlying um, um, receiving telescopes have to be? Well, that all depends on you know, what signal to noise you want. They, they, well, they, exactly. They, <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I, I would, you know, it'd be, it'd be nice if they were the, the, have the same signal to noise ratio as the dish that would require them to be 300 meters, but they could be 100 meters. ISCAT used 330 meter dishes for their uh, oh, their system that they've had operating for since the 80s. Um, so any, anywhere in that range would, would be useful for science. And of course, the more signal you have, the more things you see. How many sinkholes are there? Uh, well, there's gobs of sinkholes. I mean, uh, Don has said that there are several sinkholes were considered for the original dish. And I, uh, there's been a lot of talk about a second sinkhole being considered, but I think Don can tell to maybe clarify it better. I think he said there was not, a, maybe not a specific second sinkhole that was considered over the current one. Well, the current, I mean, the initial idea for Arecibo was a parabolic antenna looking straight up with a little bit of capability to track planets and plus or minus two and a half degrees um, in order to uh, get a quick look at the, look at uh, look at planets um, and there were sinkholes in San Sebastian and Florida that were possibilities once they decided to go to a spherical reflector 
things change and the uh, receiver sinkhole was then uh, was then selected. Um, but there are potentially other sinkholes. But if you're talking about a thirty or or even a bit somewhat larger meter or somewhat larger than that, it's, you don't necessarily need a, a sinkhole for such a thing. Uh, well, actually, I see Sean has, Sean, Sean, you have your hand up. Maybe you should go. Oh, uh, yeah, this is Sean. So one thing we have heard on a number of occasions from the Arecibo management, anything involving like another site, especially another sinkhole, that has to go through environmental impact review, That and that would take close to a decade. So that's not a short-term solution. If we want that for the future, it's fine to think about, but that they absolutely do not want that in our short-term ask, because it is not a short-term thing. Whereas anything we do on the existing site, there might be some reviews needed, but it's a lot easier and faster because it's already an NSF site being used that was being used for similar work. Yeah, so that's that was actually pretty important because I was going to say again, I'd almost say you know, forget about the money for a minute, and because what I hear, you know, being not an expert at this, is these all sound like little tweaks, you know, to the original dish, and you know, I have a feeling that's just not going to cut it. So that's why I thought you had to think outside the box, like do three three sinkholes or something. But if you're limited to that one sinkhole, I mean, maybe the, the, the idea of the dish, you know, is just a paradigm. Is there, you know, what if you just filled the sinkhole with a thousand little dishes or something? Could you do something? Could you leverage the same collecting area, but make it a lot more flexible in terms of where it could point and stuff? Well, that's the next generation Arecibo telescope design. Basically, you have a compact array within the sinkhole, which is fantastic on paper, but there's a lot of questions about how it would be designed and work in practice. Like the sinkhole can only support so much weight, and no one's sure exactly what that is, but uh, it's been considered. Can that do your planetary defense killer at? Yeah. Put a bunch so, of transmitters on each dish, or on all the dishes. So... That actually sounds pretty good. I mean, you want something that looks different and you could just imagine a beautiful, well, there must, you guys must already have them then. Beautiful graphics showing this thing, talking about how we're ready for the next technological step. We've got this beautiful sinkhole, uh, but you know, we're ready to move it into the 21st century or whatever century we're in. And if it can do your planetary defense thing, uh, Maybe that's your maybe that's your thing. I okay, we, we've had we've had a lot of arguments over like the merits of single a large single dish versus an array, and I don't think we're going to resolve that at all. Part of the reason is we want more design studies to sort of flush this out and help help basically resolve some of these arguments over like could we really build the array like we're imagining in the Arecibo sinkhole. Yeah, that was sort of the part of the discussion at the very beginning about the costs of things. Um, so that's all, that's part of it as well. And I just wanted to clarify those additional sites I was talking about are not sinkholes. There are a, a number of sites already around owned by the government and other people in Eastern Puerto Rico. Uh, there's a VLBA site on St. Croix, former Roosevelt Roads. There's, a, there's an Air Force site in Salinas. Uh, you met has a site in Cabo Rojo. These are all non-sinkhole sites. And I'm talking about putting a phased array at those sites. So, I mean, that's something, it's not another dish. The phased array, they can scan rapidly up and down the beam. And so uh, maybe some of those sites already have environmental impact statements, but sure, that's probably part of the equation. You know, I'll just throw another crazy thought out there. Sometimes cost, again, it's counterintuitive. Sometimes it's almost better to be more expensive. Um, I, I wouldn't have believed it, but it, I've seen cases where, you know, you got to just kind of go for it. You say, yeah, this thing is going to cost a half a billion dollars. And that actually almost can be an attractive thing to the Congress because they're like, well, this is something only a major national initiative can do, and it's really different. Um, so, you know, I would almost say, especially this, since this whole thing kind of sounds like a long shot, 
I don't know if I'd worry about the cost. Well, uh, Namir, I would say that in terms of the array idea, uh, the new generation receiver telescope was still based on a, on a moving, huge moving platforms with a thousand antennas on top of it. But I would like to, to, to say that uh, uh, new technologies might be able to avoid having such a huge mechanical structure and still having a thousand separate uh, uh, array, a thousand separate antenna that will be built based on a, on a different technology and, uh, and the beam will be steer electrically. And that would also uh, take uh, the, the price tag low. Uh, but of course, all of these will need, uh, will need uh, some serious engineering studies, which I understand right now, uh, we don't have the, the, the luxury of time to do it. Luca, I have a question. Um, so refract arrays are basically bandwidth limited, right? So what do you suggest about that? Um, in your talk, you had mentioned it its major problem was it, it's limited bandwidth at the moment. Yeah, uh, that's true. I mean, that's uh, a, a new technology. It's, uh, of course, it's, it's seeing a, a huge expansion, both in the communications and, uh, and rather communities. Uh, and it has never been applied to red astronomy. So there is a lot of work to do, but uh, there are also a lot of uh, new proposals that uh, uh, on how to increase the uh, the bandwidth within a single a single band, and also on how to build reflector rays that, for example, may have different layers working at different in different wavelength ranges. So there are potential solutions, but as I said, uh, they they would really need a serious uh, analysis uh, for pros and cons to really see if this technology is mature to build an array as is, uh, as is required in this case. And then there is also the, the question of the planetary radar and yeah. see if this technology can accommodate that. That is, uh, thanks. I, I have a question. Whenever we propose, does it have to ha be a technology that actually exists or can we rely on some technology you know, maturing so that we can do what we say we wanna do? That depends on the timeline, isn't it? I mean, exactly, exactly. My impression is that we. Can you yeah. as well? If you're limited in time, you inevitably are going to to design and build something based on a previous well-established technology. Well, but I, I think as we've been saying, uh, the, the glossy brochure that we send to Congress, that somebody sends to Congress, will have a, it's going to be something like this. But step one is going to be a very broad design study to find out the best way to implement that. And as a few people have said, the, uh, the answer may look nothing like the proposal, um, because it'll be designed to do the thing. But so there, uh, we, we do need something to send as a thing. And if if NGAT with its uh, a thousand eyes is the right thing to do, I'm a little worried that there will be um, some incredulity. Right? Certainly, that something about that got sent to the National Science Board, and I I understand they were not pleased. So, um, you 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 don't want to get too giggly, but you do want to have something right forward looking. And I think what Phil said, the, the, te the technology in a sense doesn't have to exist, but you have to be pretty sure you can build something sensible. It can have holes in it, but it shouldn't be wand waving. We have some folks with us, I gather today from Lockheed Martin. Uh, we, a lot of us here, I think know very little about Lockheed Martin's uh, design study. I wonder if uh, they could uh, fix up a date with the ASA people to give a presentation to the ASAP on their ideas. A lot of us would be very interested to hear a lot more 
about what they have in mind. Uh, th th this is Ed Staub uh, from Lockheed Martin, the Advanced Technology Center. Uh, it sounds like, uh, Christopher, you're, you're asking for a, a presentation, not at this time, but at a later date on what uh, our concepts are. And uh, yes, by all means, that, that can certainly be done. Yes, certainly. I settle for um, next week. Uh, can it be done next week? Uh, no, no. That might. I was being facetious. Sometime in the near future, oh. let's put it that way. Okay. Um, y yes, it can be done in the near future. Um, I, I balked at next week because at least two people on the team are going camping next week. But <laughs> we'll, we'll all be back in the office uh, a week from Monday. And, and I think um, there, there is a briefing that has already been made. And, you know, we, we might just put a little uh, tweak on it and, and then it would be ready to go. So, yes, n near term, that can certainly be accomplished. Um, I have a couple of colleagues on. We have Ken Wu and uh, Michael Luddy. Uh, Michael and Ken, would you agree with what I've just said? Uh, they're, they're, they're probably on mute. So, yeah, I, uh, I would agree. It's Mike. Lady. Okay. Okay. Th th thank you, Mike. Uh, Ro Robert White, who, uh, would, would normally be speaking for us is, is on travel today, but okay. I'm, I'm sure he would say, yes, let's do it. And we can do it soon. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, uh, Hector and I have been talking to Robert a little bit and, um, uh, uh, and b basically the design is a, is a way to use a single dish like thing with higher aperture, higher efficiency, higher coverage in, in a way that gets a lot of the weight onto the ground um, so that you don't have to have nearly as big of a suspended structure, thus saving a lot of weight in a place that we all know but it would look good if we could, I mean, the, the, the appeal of that would, would be clear to people looking at it. And it's definitely a novel structure. No telescope like this has ever been built to my knowledge. And uh, it's... Um, uh, so, right. so Mike, is that, um, is that thing what's in this uh, Anis Rashi at all? No, that's a um, different thing. That's a different thing. Okay. There have been a lot of rumors flying around like, yeah, it'll be great for planetary radar, but what about radio astronomy? So a lot of us would like to uh, just yeah. hear the real truth behind the rumors, which but I'm sure are all wrong. Also, it, it, maybe this will uh, answer a lot of questions about uh, baselines that Luca had. We found ways with the old dish of curing a lot of the, uh, baseline. the baseline problems. But uh, they were always a little, uh, what should we say, hard on signal to noise. And uh, it would be interesting to hear what this solution would offer that might uh, offer great uh, steps forward on that front. So, well, yeah, uh, maybe uh, the Lockheed Martin folks could, uh, could deal through you as a member of the ASAP board, Mike, in setting up a time and a place. Yeah, I, I have talked to Robert about that, and he was he was he was willing at some level. I think he was not sure it was quite quite ready for for that. But I, I understand they have some design work that they've started on or about to start on. So um, maybe it's time. A broad idea would be great. I don't think we, we would be the many of us would be the people who would be the ones to comment on the final nuts and bolts. But it's certainly nice to hear the generalized ideas so, so somebody asked this in the in the chat if, if like this whatever one of these concepts that looks really cool and it's futuristic and it doesn't matter if we know how to build it yet things was used for planetary sold for planetary defense would it be complementary could it be sold as being really value added to whatever the gbt would do 
So from my point of view, <clears throat> the GBT's problem is that it's not a workhorse instrument. It has a few really good applications, but it's not the thing that you're going to go out and do, um, you know, a whole bunch of them at 10 a week. It's not going to be the, the, um, the, the, the main instrument. It's, it, it's a niche instrument. And so this uh, would be, and, and the other facility that does exist at Goldstone has the problem that they, they have what I call a day job. They have another task that's their primary focus. And, the, and, and that sounds good, but, but would that mean like, so you would not be picking a fight with the GBT people? Who knows, right? Uh, <laughs> again, this is the battle of the glossy brochures, um, not the battle of what you can actually do. If, if, if you want to talk about what's actually achievable, then no. But if you want to talk about who's, uh, it, does, does, is that what they put in their glossy brochure? I, I'm, I'm no, but certain. I mean, it would almost be nice to say something like the GBT is, I don't know, maybe not pilot is the wrong word, but an exploratory, you know, figuring out all the, and then while your thing is being, the big guy is being designed, what they're learning will inform I, we, I think we could work together in that. As, as Don said, Patrick Taylor is one of the leaders of that. And we, we, we would work together to see, can we make this all sound good to all of us? Or... Um, well, that uh, would be very or, important. Or, 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 or are we competing at a level that's going to be a problem? Yeah, that would be and very Flora, important. Flora yeah. puts a similar note in the, in the chat that, that basically we have to figure out, are, is it something that would be... Uh, the, 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 are we asking for the same thing or, 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 or is this something where we, where we can cooperate? Yep. But we know those people and they're on the call, in fact. Mike, um, I have a question related to that. So GBT as a radar program has a defined timeline now, I guess, although I don't know exactly when they will start complete full operation with their uh, new radar. Uh, so, uh, so, so given the uncertainties of these proposals, are the two timelines comparable or is there any, any of this is little ahead than the other? Well, since, since Arecibo is starting with an empty hole and GBT is starting with a telescope, I think their I hope their timeline is faster. Okay. <laughs> but, but their radar technology is also that I guess there's some experimentation going on there, right? Because this is a different transmitter altogether. You can ask Patrick. Uh, uh, again, I, I hope they can have something in less than, than five to 10 years, which is what we've been talking about for scratch construction. I mean, that might almost be good, right? They mesh. You know, also one useful thing, first off for planetary defense, like, so in planetary defense, you do not want to be relying on like just one facility because like the last year of Arecibo, Goldstone was down when they came back right around the time the first cable broke. So like any facility is going to need maintenance at some time. They'll be down at some time. And if then something new and important comes along and you can only get it during one week, you want some facility available. Also okay, related but... to Mike said, what Mike said that Arecibo could schedule stuff on short notice. Like we got asteroids, we scheduled them like for just a day or two later, soon after they'd been discovered. That's much harder to do with Goldstone or GBT in their current setups. Dare I breathe declination coverage as well? Yeah, well, I think uh, as saying that we're going to be a sec the, uh, another one as a backup is not a way to go to get Congress to give you a pile of money. As others have said, you've got to say what wonderful thing we're going to do that's unduplicated anywhere else. That's not an option. Agreed. Yeah. All right. Well, I think a bunch of us do have to leave. Um, as usual, I'm not quite sure what we've accomplished. Um, um. I think would it be would it be productive if one of us wrote up the summary of today's uh, discussion? I I don't know if anybody recorded, recorded it. It's re if it is recorded, then one of us could undertake the job of summarizing it and then distributing with uh, everyone and see if there was any conclusion out of this meeting. Yeah, so it, it is being recorded. 
Okay. Thank it's, you. it's it's recorded and I'll put it on the ASAP uh, website in a couple hours when the, when once Zoom has done its thing. Okay. And Brett, do you think we need another discussion and another discussion? Probably we do. Another we plenary do. discussion, or should we now be thinking no, of no. small groups? I think we probably should talk together. Um, I about imagine the presentation from Lockheed Martin. Yes, let's have that first, and then we can come back for another meeting. Good idea. All right, I will work with Robert to get something, see if they can get something scheduled. If then, if they, if they think it's right for this. The last time we discussed it, they weren't really quite ready to present, but I'll make sure that, uh, see, see that that's, if that's changed. Uh, Sounds good. Um, Mike, I, I have a question to you. Uh, you have mentioned that the, somebody has sent this NGAT concept to the National Science Code, if I heard it correctly. I, 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 Anisha, I'm sorry, I, I, I'm over-representing things. I, I know that people have looked at stuff and there have been concerns. Um, it's still, uh, I, I, and I, I, that, was, that was somewhat flip. I, I think people have looked at it with some concern, but I don't know all, any of those details. I was wondering whether they have any report or a, a list of concerns they have. I don't, I, don't, I don't think there's been any formal response. Yes. And, I, and that's actually hearsay. So I don't even know if the concerns were really with that. I was very much overstating that case. Okay, well, it's any further comments uh, should be quick. It's noon. Thanks everybody. Um, and we'll, we'll be in touch about the Lockheed uh, presentation and then another discussion after that. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you.